Alexis is a very headstrong girl. She's, she's got a very strong personality from the standpoint that she's always been somebody who, when she decides she wants to do something, she will do whatever it takes to do it. In eighth grade, I was dancing a lot and I'd made a lot of new friends and I was on a great team, but then a lot changed. I had to stop dancing and it was just not the same anymore. What happened in the beginning, she fainted just a couple of times, but one of them was really dramatic. I was running the weekly mile for PE. I felt myself kind of getting dizzy. She just fell face first on the blacktop. It was just, it was a big deal. They ended up saying, oh, it's just dehydration. I remember just thinking instinctively like, as a mom, yeah, but there are hundreds of kids running the mile every day. They're not passing out. An EKG reveals something extremely unusual about Lexi's heart. He said that there's something going on with that EKG. So he said, I'm sending you to a colleague at Loma Linda. And I was like, okay, oh, just let us know when. All right, just let us know when the referral. He's like, no, now. And Dr. Bach is the one who uh, diagnosed her. There were several kind of possibilities, but one of them being what's called restrictive cardiomyopathy, which is a form of heart muscle problem where the heart becomes very stiff. He said, this is very serious. He said, she easily could have died while she was dancing. And he said, and she still can. And then, you know, he turned to Lexi and he's very blunt. He said, you will never dance again with this heart. The average lifespan is about two years after someone's diagnosed with restrictive cardiomyopathy. The only solution is a heart transplant. Many people die from, from this disease over time. It was Friday morning on February 3rd. I woke up, went to Lexi's room, and I was like, okay, Lexi, you know, time to get up. But she didn't respond at all. So I was like, Lexi, so I went and shook her a little bit, shook her leg a little bit. You know, and then I looked at her and her face was just gray. Her lips were blue. And I'm like, Lexi, Lexi, I start shaking her. She's not responding. And that's when I'm like, Lexi, wake up. All I heard was, Lexi's not waking up. Lexi's not waking up. So I jumped out of bed and I ran to her room. And uh, she was lying there. And she, was, she was blue, you know, her, her lips were blue and she wasn't responding, so I was checking. I, there was no pulse, she wasn't breathing, and uh, so I did, the first thing I knew to do, I, I started CPR. I was doing compressions and I wasn't getting anything. All, all that was going through my mind is just keep going, just keep going. The paramedics arrive and take over, but after another 17 minutes of CPR, they still can't get a pulse they'd be doing stuff and they say what now they were asking each other what that's not working what now they're very schooled to be straight-faced but I could tell things were just getting more and more serious and they were kind of like I could see it on their faces that they were kind of getting ready to say you know I was trying to hang on to hope but I was grasping the reality that we've just lost our daughter I literally was on my knees in my room, just begging God, please. I never got to say goodbye to her. She cannot go this way. And then uh, and all of a sudden, one of the guys looked up and they were getting something and he looked at me and he goes, he gave me a thumbs up. They got a pulse. It was a weak pulse. They did it, I think they dosed her with epinephrine and they got a, a weak pulse and then immediately they, they sprung into action. They brought her down got her in the ambulance and got her off to, uh, to the hospital. Lexi is in a state of complete heart block. A temporary pacemaker is put through a vein in her neck. She is then transferred to Loma Linda University Children's Hospital. The room that she was wheeled into above the door had a verse, and I believe it's Ezekiel 3323. Mm -hmm. And it said, I will put a new spirit in you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I remember seeing that thinking, what? All of the drama of the journey and the trauma took place in that room with that verse above her door. The question in my mind the whole time is my daughter, 
how long was her brain without oxygen? Because if she was lying there and she was blue, is there any of her there or is she a vegetable? That was kind of, I mean, to put it bluntly. So I actually asked the doctor, I asked her and she said, we just don't know, we won't know yet. I was in the waiting room talking with some people and all of a sudden, Irene ran in to the waiting room and said, Todd, come here, there's a problem. And so I ran into the, the cardiac ICU and there's bells going off that she had coded in the hospital. It was pandemonium in there because there's hospital staff, people were, there were maybe 20 doctors in the room and then spilling out into the hallway, going down the hallway. And there she is for the second time I saw my daughter, Blue. Her heart had stopped again. And in this case, I think it was close to 45 minutes, hospital CPR, they were not able to revive her. They had to do an emergency procedure. At that time, the only way in order to keep her alive was essentially to put her on a form of mechanical heart-lung support called ECMO. It was the middle of the afternoon on Tuesday when I received the call that she was arrested and having CPR done again, and that uh, she was probably a good candidate for ECMO. ECMO is a pump that will oxygenate Lexi's blood outside her body, then pump it back in. But the procedure is risky. He said, this case, we got to do it now. It's an emergency. We're taking whatever staff we've got, and we can't do it in the OR. We've got to do it in the ICU. Uh, she's got maybe a 10% chance of making it through this. Irene was crying. She said, I need to call my brothers. They got to be here. And I still remember he took her by the hand. And he said, my dear, there is no time. We have to do this now. We mobilized the team and emergently uh, put her on ECMO at the bedside. The blood would circulate outside her body and get oxygenated and they would pump it back to her body. So that's what they were able to do in an emergency setting and that kept her alive. Against all odds, ECMO is successful. The procedure worked and she, she lived through it. Um, so it was the 10% that, that won out. The next day, I asked him, I said, Dr. Gucci, did you really mean 10%? Actually, really, in your case, it was more like a 99% mortality rate. You know, I was giving you a little extra so you could have something to hope for. She really needed a heart immediately. And what, I still remember him saying, we really need, she needs to be have a heart within a week. We had increased her status on the list to the top of the list, so that way we could try to get her a heart as soon as possible, which is what she needed. But before they can find a heart, Lexi develops complications with ECMO. She stayed on, on that uh, device for about two days before she developed a complication of it with her leg not receiving enough blood. If they didn't do something, she was going to have to have the leg amputated. Well, as a result of this, they had to do another emergency operation because they couldn't wait a week. Her leg was going to be completely gone. Thursday morning, I said, we have to look at our resources and change the system. And that afternoon, we took her to the operating room, disconnected her groins from the ECMO machine, and repaired the circulation to her right leg. The team decides to transition her to a ventricular assist device, or LVAD, a battery-operated mechanical pump that has to be surgically implanted. We put in a left ventricular assist device to support her, her left heart and took the ECMO cannulas out and um, reconstructed the arteries to her leg um, and we were able to salvage uh, the leg. But there are still more complications. She developed an re allergic reaction to the heparin which is needed to thin the blood in order to keep the device working. So at that point we had to switch her to a different form of anticoagulation and she developed liver failure with that medication so we had to switch to a third type of medication. Every, every day was a challenge with her. She, uh, she was a, very much a, a struggle and uh, an uphill fight for the entire team. Almost every day, she would have to be shocked to bring her heart back, which just was a sign that her heart was getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And she desperately needed a transplant. Someone had counted over, over the whole period she was here that she would have received well over 100 shocks um, to her body in order to keep her, her heart stable. Despite challenge after challenge after challenge, the team stays committed. You become so heavily invested that, you know, it's after, you know, being awake for three straight nights, what's another night, you know? And a lot of it was her and her family. Um, they never once lost their faith in our team. Um, sorry.
I was sitting bedside again, just praying for her, talking to her, and that's kind of what I did the whole time. And then the phone rang, and the nurse said, oh, it's for you. And I was like, oh my gosh, what? You know, what now? And he said, we have a heart. Lexi is extremely weak. No one knows if she'll survive the surgery, but the medical team is determined to give it everything they've got. One month after Lexi's heart stopped beating, they open her up. The heart that caused crisis after crisis is no longer inside Lexi's body. Dr. Razouk and Dr. Martins implant the healthy donor heart, and it begins beating immediately. The surgery, just like the rest of Lexi's care, is filled with complications and challenges. But after 12 hours in the operating room, the surgery is finally complete. The transplant is a success. Her eyes opened up and she looked around and shes you could see this terror coming across her face and she started crying. She asked the question, I'll never forget this, she goes, am I going to have to have a transplant? And she didn't realize that she already had it. And I said, Lexi. No, you've already had the transplant. She goes, I have a new heart. Yes, you've already had a new heart. She started crying and she said, I'm so happy. It's kind of crazy, the whole process, because one minute I was just living life like normal teenager and the next I'm waking up in the hospital. And, sorry, <laughs> that was um, kind of scary for me. If her life was to be saved, but she wasn't all together there, I would take that yeah. gladly. We, yeah. we would do anything. We would pay any price it, it took for that. Uh, but then to know she's all there. With Lexi, that's the most amazing part. And lots of children with these types of devices will have a stroke or a bleed in the brain that can lead to significant damage. And she's a miraculous child. We had done three CAT scans on her during the time around when she had had the device in and never saw one bit of bleeding on them. There was nothing else there that was bad. And for us to see that is just, is just miraculous. She calls to mind uh, a patient with a similar condition from a few years back who also had restrictive cardiomyopathy and that patient didn't make it. Um, and so it's hard for me to think of, of Lexi without thinking of that patient. Dr. Educate, remember she said, she pulled us aside, she said, you need to realize that what you've seen with your daughter is a miracle. Come forward. Come forward. Okay. Good, Lexi. Lexi has been immobile for a month and her muscles have atrophied severely. She will have to learn how to sit up again, to eat again, to walk again. Wow, Lexi. Lexi! Give yourself a little bit more. That is awesome. I feel like this has changed me to be more grateful for life and not take things for granted. Like I had to learn how to walk again. Like even as simple as picking up a spoon and like eating cereal. I had to learn how to do all of that again. And it just made me appreciate life. Still even now, to hear her say mom is like, yeah. it's, it's a big deal. You want to just spend all your time with that person because um, you realize how precious that time together is. So, and then you start driving her crazy. <laughs> Today, Lexi is getting ready to go to college. Her goal is to become an animator and work at Pixar. Someone else's heart is inside me, and I'm grateful for the family allowing their son or daughter to 
give me such a wonderful gift. The greatest gift ever.